What's up guys? It's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and I'm really sorry because I've been shooting a few videos today and Spidey is right here and I've been hoping that she's going to do something for you guys for the last few videos and she hasn't moved. So this is my last video that I'm shooting tonight. This is your last chance, Spidey. <laughs> so hopefully she does something. Anyway, um, today we're going to talk about tarantula diet and nutrition and I think this is an important one especially for newbies because um, there's so many things to learn and above all the different care requirements, behavioral stuff, um, temperament stuff and husbandry, um, then you have to worry about what you're going to feed this thing when, you're, when you get a tarantula. Um, so I want to say a few important words about that, cover the basics. And uh, I do want to point out a disclaimer that, you know, for some, the answer might seem a little bit obvious. Like, what do you feed a tarantula? Well, obviously, spiders eat bugs, right? Um, so you might think that you can just go outside and catch a worm or a fly <laughs> or a cricket or a roach. Or if you live in a city apartment like me, um, you might have a roach for a roommate and you might think that you can just catch that and give it to your tarantula to save some money and convenience. Um, but I want to put out a disclaimer that no, you can't do that. Well, you could, but you shouldn't. And there's a really, really, really important reason why. Um, if you are getting a bug from the outside or even inside, you do not know if this bug might have come in contact with pesticides or chemicals or might have some sort of parasite or something that they're bringing in from the outdoors or the wild or wherever and you don't want to pass that on to your tarantula so i know it might be convenient and you might think that it's the obvious choice or thing to do um please do not give your tarantula bugs that <laughs> have not come from an actual pet store or a bug breeder or something like that or someone who sells feeders please go to people who know what they're doing who have raised these feeders um, and uh, I'm gonna leave a link to um, some resources in the description. Well, please go to one of those companies instead um, because this is for the health and safety of your tarantula. You do not wanna introduce them to anything weird or unsafe. So um, that's all I wanna say about that. So let's get more into the nutrition and dietary factors of it. So a good optimized tarantula diet consists of some variety. So when I say that, I mean that um, you want your tarantulas diet to be well-rounded uh, and you know, it's a lot of people do successfully feed their tarantulas one type of bug. There's nothing really wrong with that. But I will say that not all bugs are created equal, especially when it comes to nutritional value and what might be the healthiest for your tarantula. Just like human foods, some tarantula foods are better than others. So some really common tarantula foods might be crickets, worms like super worms and mealworms depending on the size of your tarantula and another really common one is roaches such as dubia roaches and red runners worms are generally very fatty in nutritional content uh, they have a lot of guts obviously um, generally when it comes to nutritional value crickets and roaches tend to be considered more healthy because they're more protein and less fat so I would say that if you're going to go for a well-rounded approach or very healthy approach, you could definitely still give your tarantulas worms, um, but I would not put these as the main component of your tarantula's diet. And I'll talk about my own uh, experience with feeding my tarantulas and trying to figure out a good meal plan. Um, so I have two tarantulas. Blinky is my baby Arizona blonde, still a sling, still very small. And right now they're on a, a diet of just strictly baby crickets um, because they're so small. I can't really give them anything else. Uh, I don't have access to like very tiny roaches or anything like that. So right now they eat baby crickets and that's fine. They love them. Um, and you know, once they get a little bit bigger, I'm going to try to try some different other food items. But um, so that's that. And then my uh, Chilean rose hair, Spidey, who is an elderly, beautiful lady. Very boring right now, though. <laughs> um, she was originally on crickets, uh, at least at the pet store that she came from, but I realized that wasn't working out for her because she was too slow. So then she was on a meal of super uh, worms strictly because she wouldn't really catch anything else for a few years. And this kind of sparked my interest in tarantula nutrition, I guess, because 
she was going on really long fasting periods and that's pretty normal for her species but it was getting really ridiculous and someone on tumblr one day suggested that um you know because she was fasting so much and she wasn't even in primal or anything like that that um it might be because she's been on a, a diet just of secret worms you know because they're so fat fatty so they suggested that maybe switching to something that was higher in protein and lower in fat might actually regulate her appetite now i don't know if that's true um but that was really all i needed to hear um i thought that, that was really interesting um i don't know much about tarantula diet regulation it's something that i need to look into but it made sense to me you know um eating something that is so fatty might throw off her diet or her rhythms or anything like that and i do think that regardless it's it's a good idea to give someone a well-rounded diet so i started to look into things and i was like okay well since she can't eat crickets and won't maybe i can try roaches so finally an exotic store opened up near me called ill exotics and they sell dupia roaches and i tried a roach about six months ago was very unsuccessful she wasn't into it at all <laughs> but after I got tired of having this thing for six months and was about to dispose of it, um, I decided to try one more time and wouldn't you know, she ate it. <laughs> and I was so happy because now this means that Spidey is going to have a more well-rounded diet. And I'm really excited to start giving her roaches now and seeing if that actually does help regulate her appetite and or does actually like have some sort of health benefits to her. And I probably will still feed her worms every now and then but I do think there's a real benefit to um, giving them variety of feeders, definitely. The other important component to tarantula nutrition is not only what kind of feeders you're giving them and whether you're kind of switching it up every now and then and giving them a variety, but it's also what you feed the feeders. So in the tarantula hobby, there is this thing called gut loading. And that is when you try to feed your feeders optimum nutrition so that that nutrition, vitamins, and vitality is passed on to your tarantula when they eat them. And the idea is that your tarantula benefits from the health of its feeders. Now, fortunately, feeders are not picky. They will eat anything, pretty much. And I've witnessed this, whether it's crickets, roaches, or worms. They're all pretty non -particu unparticular about what they eat. Um, which is good because um, that ends up being pretty affordable for you. A lot of times you can just give them things around your house. So, you know, I've heard of tarantula owners giving their feeders um, things like cereal, uh, vegetables, fruits. Um, I myself usually give the feeders like apples or sliced up potatoes. They are not picky at all. They'll eat anything. They'll even eat each other, which is totally gross, but that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, you can just feed these things what you have around the house. And I like to try to give them fruits and vegetables if I can, because then I think that they're getting like real vitamins and nutrients instead of cereal. But um, you can kind of feed these guys whatever you have. Um, and uh, you can even, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to just have food around the house, you can also buy like um, cricket gel or like feeder gel, which I'll leave a link to below. Um, so you can use that for food if you don't want to be cutting up food and giving it to them. So it's a good idea to keep your feeders well fed, not only so that they don't eat each other and do gross things, but just so that when you're giving your food, uh, when you're giving the feeders to your tarantula, that they're getting healthy crickets or worms or roaches and not sick ones or weak ones because you want your tarantula to be nourished by its food. So um, that is a good way to do it, gut loading. And now there are other feeding alternatives that we should talk about. Um, despite how controversial they are, we have to mention that tarantulas will eat way more than crickets, worms, and roaches in the wild. Crickets will be, I mean, uh, tarantulas will be opportunistic feeders in the wild, and they will eat anything from mice to lizards to small mammals, um, basically anything because they have to. However, in captivity, we can ensure that they eat safe food and food that won't hurt them in the process and food that's really healthy for them. So I think that we should kind of think about um, nutritionally what these things might um, mean for them. And, you know, just because they will eat it doesn't necessarily mean that they should or that it's the best option for them. So we should mention ethical concerns aside, you know, 
should tarantulas be fed things like mice or pinky mice or lizards or anything like that? And I have seen tarantula owners do this. Some people have said that their tarantulas have not had any problems. Some people have said that there have been problems when your tarantula has been given a lot of these things. Um, you know, I know that for many years, um, there was um, reports of tarantulas having molting problems because their bodies could not digest properly the calcium in mice. Um, now there isn't really any solid scientific proof on that. There was a report out or something like that, but there was problems with it and might have not been proven correctly. Um, so that is something that we're still trying to figure out. Unfortunately, it's not being researched thoroughly enough to really prove it one way or another. Um, but yes, you know, there are bones in mice and I don't know if tarantulas can, um, can actually digest these things properly. I don't know, but, um, I would say that bugs like crickets, roaches, or worms are completely adequate for all of tarantula's nutritional needs. So I don't really see the point in feeding them something as large or as calcium heavy or fatty or protein heavy as a, like a a lizard or a mouse or anything like that. That's just my take on it. Um, you know, I know that some people have had healthy tarantulas and they only feed them a pinky mice occasionally or something like that. But um, for me, that's kind of where I stand on it. And, you know, we just need to do more research on this. But, you know, if we're talking about nutrition, we have to mention that there are other alternatives that are very controversial and we don't really know how this all plays out in the long run. And so now that we've talked about what to feed your tarantula, what to feed your tarantula's food, and uh, other alternatives, <laughs> um, we should also discuss that, you know, making a feeding plan or meal plan for your tarantula, or like a diet for your tarantula, is not only about what you're feeding them and the nutritional, I guess, requirements and optimization of what they're eating, but it's also like things like how often are you feeding them and how much are you feeding them? And power feeding is also another controversial topic in the hobby that like we really can't agree on. <laughs> um, and you know, like I said, the reason that we can't agree on these things is because there hasn't been enough research and the reports are just so variable. There's just, you know, this hobby is still just growing and establishing itself very much. So um take what I, everything that i say with a grain of salt because um nothing has been for real proven <laughs> so power feeding is when you try to feed your tarantula purposely overfeed your tarantula basically as much as it will handle so that it grows bigger faster and now generally this is accepted with slings because slings are very fragile and there's a higher mortality rate so a lot of tarantula owners will definitely give them quite a bit to eat just so that they molt faster and grow faster and that's generally pretty safe for slings because they are so young and they molt more frequently anyway but for adults it's kind of dicey Older tarantulas tend to not eat as much and there is a risk that they might be obese because of eating too much. Um, older tarantulas don't molt nearly as much and they don't have to grow as fast. So that's kind of controversial. Uh, I will say that tarantulas who tend to be obese are at a higher risk of injury. Um, there's not so much evidence saying that they might pass faster or cause other issues, but I will say that if a tarantula is fat and it falls, there's a higher risk that there will be a serious injury if it's overly plump than if it's a slimmer tarantula. But my take on it is that if you have an older tarantula, um, power feeding is pretty unnecessary. But I do think that tarantulas in general are good judges of what they can handle. Um, I've seen Spidey refuse food before just because she's not feeling it and it's not connected to pre-molt. So, you know, I think that, you know, some species are really good eaters and some aren't, and you just kind of have to feel it out. Think about the species you have, think about whether they're in pre-molt or not. Think about what's good for the spider. Like how healthy do they look? Um, are their molts fine? How is their health in general? Um, and all those things, you know, come into when you're making a, a meal plan or a feeding schedule for them. So I'm definitely going to make a video in the future, a more detailed video about how to create a feeding routine for your tarantula because I think that is very stressful, especially for beginners who are just trying to figure out what the hell they're doing and trying to figure out these weird creatures. 
Um, so that'll be coming up in the future. Um, but I hope that this at least gave you some food for thought about um, what things you should be feeding your tarantula or what you can do to make sure that they have like the most, I guess, well-rounded diet. Um, because it definitely does affect their health. You know, they rely on good, solid nutrition for things like molting. Um, I think that's one of the most important ones, but also just for like longevity and being able to live their little spider lives. Um, so I hope that was really helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe. And um, if you have any feedback on anything I said and have other ideas about tarantula nutrition, let me know. Uh, it's something that I'm still learning about too. And now I'm finally gonna be able to give Spidey other food than worms. So this is awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna put updates about that journey. Um, so yeah, we're going to learn together about feeding routines and nutrition. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.